Come and get started on a new mission, mission. a new direction, direction. a new intention. intention. Welcome to 5.8G Alive at Connections 50 Plus. I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite. And I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, catering to all your prospects in the third act of life. Economic well-being, well-being. social gratification, gratification. personal fulfillment. fulfillment. Join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Connections 50 Plus Facebook page, YouTube channel, and on Gael the Caribbean. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Connections 50 Plus 5.8G Alive. I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, one of the co creators of Connections 50 Plus, and as usual, with me is my colleague. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. How are you? I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite, the other co creator of Connections 50 Plus, bringing you 5.8G Alive. Well, Terry Ann, we into the August. We just came out of a beautiful Emancipation Day celebration, and we're still celebrating. And now we're moving into well, August. August does it say August vacation or they say what summer vacation? Jennifer, I just remembered I had to do something. I have to make a big, big, big apology, Jennifer. Last week we had our beautiful emancipation show. And people would know we alternate and I posted. And Jennifer, in looking back at the show, I made a horrible, horrible mistake. What you did, I didn't notice. Out that show, I behaved like some classic Trini, referring to Afro-Trinidadians, Trinidad. And I forgot, I went out of my mind and forgot that I am a citizen of a nation state, Trinidad and Tobago. (laughs) Uh-huh. I didn't see Tobago once. Please don't do that. So I I didn't pick that up. I didn't pick that up. I, I think we just assume any I guess up. under these circumstances, you say Trinidad is assumption, but we can um, no longer assume that. We yeah. can't. I didn't even say Trinbagodian. So I want to give a special apology. Shout out to my Tobagonian sisters and brothers. I could imagine you must have felt so much carpet behind me throughout that discussion. But it's a bad habit that Trinidadians have. I am not proud that I did it. I try not to do it. So please accept my humble apology. Humbly, humbly, humbly. I am very Trinbagonian. So <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> I have to ask forgiveness too because I didn't even notice that. <laughs> It was only in the replay I saw it. I said, oh my God. I was really not proud of myself. So, <laughs> so good afternoon, so, Tobago. <laughs> <laughs> so as we mentioned, August is a time when you really free up and be happy and be with among families. So, but we're going to discuss today, you know, Terry Ann, is so important as we continue, you know, with the 5.8 year live show that what we do is really so important to our cohort to bring that sense of peace, that happiness, that freedom. Well, we in so all we for, chat- for us in Trinbago, we start with emancipation and we end August with independence. So it is really the month where we think about our empowerment and our where we mm-hmm. how we handle ourselves and so on. So you're right, August is <laughs> special. So on this show, we're chatting about, you know, how can you live a better life, happier mm-hmm. life, mm-hmm. really enjoy life on this stage. Let's carry on. So what we're going to do, we're going to be chatting about being in a tribe, mm-hmm. Definitely. like having that that family circle, that French circle, you know, to move forward at this stage. Okay. So, Tarian, 
I, you know, growing up with my dad, he liked to use sayings, always use different sayings and quotations to, to motivate us, you know, and to keep us on a certain height. And he had this saying, damn if you do, and damn if you don't. And it normally comes in when we, we complain and say, oh gosh, don't care what we do. They're not happy. Yeah, you know, that type of saying, whether it is to come from work, it come from some sort of line, whatever. And I interpret that to mean that, you know what? You can't make everybody happy. And since you can't make everybody happy, do the best you can, but make sure you are happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so it comes like we say, and we always say, put you first. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't said in those words, put you first, but clearly, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Meaning, hey, let's make ourselves happy. What do you think about that saying, Terry? Well, I think some people may have interpreted like that. Let's make ourselves happy and put me first. And I think that those of us who were able to do that or who are able to do that are amongst the fortunate ones. But I think for many people, when they face with the damned if you do and damned if you don't dilemma, end up stuck right between the two dams. <laughs> because they don't know what to do. do and they can't do it. <laughs> and they just... So best you don't do anything. <laughs> and better you do nothing. And I believe that part of part of why some of us are, are saying, yeah, we're happy, we're okay, but you're, you're looking at this third act stage with a kind of side eye. It's because we may not have been able to say, well, do me, but we've just been staring in the headlights and yeah. not, not knowing how to... You you use you you are an energy coach and and how to, to to muster our forces to to energize ourselves to be at peace, happy. But Jennifer, you know, I want to ask a question. I wonder sometimes if we understand where we are on that continuum. Because sometimes we may be saying, I'm doing me. When in reality, we may be stuck on a treadmill or in a rut. <laughs> Is that possible? Do we see that? I would say, <clears throat> I would say yes, because many times we're not aware. We, 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 we have, we put on, I say we put on blinkers. Yeah. Is a block in our mind because you don't want to accept the fact or you don't want to believe that you don't know where you're going. <laughs> you understand? Um, it's like you you drive in, so you say, let's go. I'm from Port of Spain, so I say, let's go south because I don't know south at all. And, you know, they tell you, the Terrian from South Terrian will tell me, oh, meet me so and so and so and so. And I, and I go in, eh? I'll lose, but I don't want to call her to tell her I'll lose because she will get vexed. Uh, uh, you know, I have a friend who lives deep south and every time I go by her, I lose. Mm -hmm. I ask about 10 people on the way and I don't ever call her because I know she would get vexed. <laughs> Sometimes we don't like to admit that we're on the wrong part or we may be on the wrong part. And we don't want to seek help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because either we are ashamed, we we're afraid we, we get both or it it shows shows us up. Um and I think on this stage that we are on, like some people when you talk about age, you say, Oh God, I want to talk about age. I don't want to use the word retirement. I don't want to feel so being stuck is something you don't say at all. You know, um, but as we continue on this stage, I am sure we recognize that we don't all have the answers. Yeah. We don't have the answers. And we need to, to start examining. And I would say, why? Why 
don't we have the answers? Why do we feel this way? Why don't matter what? We still haven't found that 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 happiness, that mm. what we're looking for. You know, it keeps evading us. Mm. But we need to sit back and ask why. And I think, and we have to be honest. We have to be true to ourselves. We have to admit that we may be lost a bit. We don't know the answers. And maybe you won't find the answer in one person or doing one thing. But if we open up, if we be open-minded and, and, and be honest and truthful, then yeah, we would find, we will yeah. find the answer. We could create that little path to take us where we want to be. Jennifer, I want to put a little spin on being lost. You know, I think you're lost when you know where you're supposed to be. And where you are now, there's no relationship to where you're supposed to be. So the sense of being lost is very palpable in your mind. And you know, I am not where I am supposed to be. But sometimes, and I'm going to use you as an example, <laughs> if we are on a road trip and we go in, now people, Jennifer yeah, loves to drive. And Jennifer is very comfortable sitting back, being, oh, I don't know where I am. And she's comfortable. Now she's not lost because she doesn't know where she's supposed to be. <laughs> but she's in a place. I but I love the drive. <laughs> And she love the scenery. And she enjoyed the scenery. I remember where were we going? We were going to Point and we took some back roads. <laughs> and it was like, I can't help you. I don't have a clue where I am, but Jennifer taking it the scene. <laughs> now, if you ask her, she's lost. She can't say I'm lost because I don't but know. There's one other aspect to that, Terrian. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I trust you. I trust the driver. <laughs> so you need to trust someone <laughs> who you feel could take you there, wherever. Yeah. And you have to trust that where you're being taken is it's somewhere you, you will enjoy. But Jennifer, I think that if we, when we get into the, that damned if you do, damned if you don't, and we don't know if to do or to don't, whether it has to do with our careers, our money, our partners, yes. our children, our grandchildren, our parents, the house, what to buy in the grocery, whether to spend money in the market or in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Those decisions, damned if you do, damned if you don't. We get into that space of somehow someone else, you are conscious that you know who is the driver, so you can sit down and enjoy the scenery because the driver knows where you're going, so you're not lost. You'll get there. Yeah. But I think for many of our cohort, um, as we navigate life, you don't have a very reliable co-pilot. And because we're not sure where we're going, that damned if you do, damned if you don't attitude has to be let me make the best of wherever now is. And I think sometimes that can be dangerous because you're going to end up somewhere. And if you don't have a clear idea of where you want to eventually be, whether it is in the next five years, in the next 10 years, in the end, or for Christmas, if you don't know who the driver is and be comfortable that handing my piloting over to you is going to get me to a place that I want to be in. We could be like float some on a river, head into an ocean, head into another continent, and you can end up, then you'll end up lost. And I, I think that- And as you say, who the driver is, what came to mind? is what is your driving force? So even if you can't identify actual driver, somebody to lead you, yes, a model, some you, you know your role model, you can decide within 
What is your driving force? What you're passionate about? What that would could be make a driver. me? That could be a driver. What would make me, let's say, be any passenger in that car, say, you know what? Mm -hmm. I want to go to somewhere that have water. You understand? To help mm -hmm. the, the driver. So I am determining, you see me? I want to go by the sea or by the river, somewhere that have water. Because that there is where I would be happy. So mm -hmm. we also have to look at, as you say, you may say, okay, I ain't have no role model, I ain't have nobody to drive me. But within what is your driving force? Mm -hmm. You know, what will make you do something to make yourself happy? No, that is that is important. And you know, Jennifer, if we were to bring it down to like we we've been meeting all kinds of people, and and again. 5.8G world. You all are beautiful. We find you all over the place in Trinidad. We find you abroad. We find you everywhere. And, and we're making, we know we are reaching people in real, real ways. We know. Um, we got feedback on how our LGBT discussion touched people. You're not making comments, but we know. So we have to continue. And I think this discussion we're having about damned if you do, damned if you don't, are you stuck, where's your driving force, is something that people are battling with. And life today causes, it, makes it so important that we we put out a front of normalcy, of happiness, of all kinds of stuff. But many of us are not sure that the path that we're doing now we go in, we go in, but we're not sure where it's ending up or probably more dangerously, we're not lifting our heads to see where it's going, you know? And we can talk a little bit, Jennifer, about some of the things that we, we are doing. And I, I want to start by looking at... Uh, life some are i'm in my 60s all right and i'm taking the the position of our our 60 cohort i have adult sons i am not yet blessed with grandchildren and they are starting off on their on their own um they are boys they are men i shouldn't say boys and they're making strides getting there and I have a real struggle with, uh, with control and let go and of being worried about who their choices are, partners, girlfriend, whether they exist or don't exist, friends when they go out. And I often try to balance my head and say, okay, Tarian, um, when you call, when you argue, when you when you try to help them make a decision, um, how involved do I get in their decisions? And if I see them making a decision that I think may be detrimental, in my view, um, how do I make that decision to go hit your head on the wall or protect you from every single mishap that may occur i struggle with that and it causes a knot and i ask myself damn if you do get involved and be that that parent that that interfering harassing mother but damned if you don't pick up the carnage of not letting them build independence and things like that Am I stuck? Um, do I let them, do I end up with regret? And I, I want to say, I want to feel that, how do I know if I'm stuck? Is it correct, Jennifer, and I'm asking you this as, as a coach, as an energy coach. Yeah. I, do, like you, I look back and I, I check myself. I check myself every year. What has happened? What's the progress? What's the progress with me? What's the progress with my husband, my parents, my children? And I ask myself, do I feel regret? 
And if I feel a lot of regret about something, then I say that probably I have not done when I should or done something that I should not have. Is that a good test to use to determine where you go in the damned if you do damned if you don't? Because all our lives have different circumstances. Yeah, and I agree in all our lives different. <laughs> and because of that, there isn't, a, 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 I would say, a clear answer. No. And I would start by saying, one, you, you, you know, you not, and, and I wouldn't even use the word stop, but you understand why you may not be comfortable. What causing that discomfort? What okay. causing that anxiety? And I think when we start with the question, why? Why am I feeling like that? But you identify the feeling. So in your case, maybe a, a family situation, somebody, let's just use on the broad sense, it may be family situation, it may be, and, and we cover the things, maybe financial, maybe whatever. But you first identify the why. And, and for you, the why, why are you feeling like that? Why uh, thing it's really? It's a feeling. So admit a, the situation, you're okay. But when it comes into thing is why. So you identify the why, the discomfort. And, the, and you also went further to identify the discomfort is because you don't want to, you feel, you, you want to hold on still. You want to still have that control. They are big men. They are doing things that you're not used to because you're a woman, no matter what. You will understand that, that line. You don't want to hand over Yep. Your your fears to your to, to your husband because you want you feel you know and you have to admit, and I don't you understand really what don't he's know. doing with them. I don't understand what yeah. he's doing with them. <laughs> and the thing is, <laughs> we have to also recognize sometimes it's not it's not you are not the one. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. This time is you don't. You you leave it alone because. You now say this this is a man thing too. And the way you would want to control, you have mm -hmm. to admit, as children, yes. Oh, yes, you could say what yeah. school they want to what they do, the discipline, the values, all that. But you have done it. And this is where I feel our age group in letting go is hard because we had the full control all the time. Yeah. And it is not easy for us to see them moving away from us. And watching you like, where are you from? And getting into trouble. Now. <laughs> yeah, give me a break. As a woman, you yeah, understand this. Leave it to daddy to, to, to think whether daddy present or not. We ain't going there. But leave it to the man. Leave it to a man to understand what it's like. And this timing. This is a time we don't know nothing about when they leave the house. Our fear is, is from before. They're going to get in an accident. <laughs> Somebody... They might get in a quarrel. Somebody might shoot them because this is this is what we're reading. So it comes from not our get knowledge, get physical experience, <laughs> but it comes from what we read in any newspaper. They would be the one will be held up, get shot. All the the, the negative energy we bring in. All the that wrong situation. person in the crowd. They don't yeah. know everybody in the group, and they have so, one person in the group. <laughs> so guess what? You really want to do, and they're looking at you and say, "Look, you know what you want us to do? You want to keep us inside. You don't want us go nowhere. Or if you go out, you want to send a bodyguard with a time, oh, a time slot." And, and, and a list of what you should do and not do. If you see somebody looking like this, you move away. I laugh at because I have to bring in this. My granddaughter complaining where she went wherever with her cousins and one cousin. We use the word bullying, but I'm bullying, teasing or whatever. And she said she had a terrible time. And I say, well, it's up to you to make yourself be. If they they um, move away, she said, move away. And you're only following me, following me. What you want me to do? So I had no answer. So I just had to bring in that. But the thing is, you don't have the answer. They have to figure it out for themselves because this is their time and their life. But we want to have, 
we don't have the solution. So, so situate there are situations where you have to recognize, hey, you really don't have the solution. Leave it to the other driver. Leave it to the, to the man and, and, and I'm using your situation, right? But leave it to someone who you feel that they, and, and let me tell you though, and I, I really feel they might share information with you, but not necessarily for them to get the answer from you, mm -hmm. but hoping that you will understand where they are. Mm -hmm. But we're not good at that. I'm sorry, we're not good at that. We are so accustomed telling you what to do. Do this, do it this way. Da, 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 da. I'm not saying it like what he's telling me. <laughs> My children used to say, like if I in the, if in the army, too. Da, 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 da. that's what they used to do. So, so yes, carry on. So I think in situations like that, I think the first thing is to be honest with ourselves, which you are, knowing that, it's difficult to let go, being aware of that. And the other thing, though, and we talk about the energy, what we do, we always go to the negative. Jeez, we always look, they will get in an accident, they will get shot, they will. Do, 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 do. You can't sleep until they come home and you're saying, Thank you, Lord. But let's reverse it. Can we think that? Let them go out and enjoy themselves at boys. Let them experience whatever the experience is. We're supposed to be having faith and praying. Leave it in the hand, really letting go. Leave it in the hands of God to safeguard them. Recognize that you can't stop the accident. We know an accident, somebody going driving, so safe, 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 and somebody break the, the traffic light. We know that the, the person coming to the van, shots fired. 100 people in the bar, 99 say one person gets shot. Mm -hmm. Why can't we look at, in your case, your sons would be the ones, they enjoying themselves. You brought them up. They have their values. They have all the things that we, we will boast and say, oh, we're trying a nice children, and they are. But yet still, yeah, you entrust them to go out. So my thing is the letting go is just as how we recognize I think we switch our thoughts from the negative to the positive because we always look at the negative. The child, the girl, child, she gonna go and get pregnant. The girl, child, she will do this. The boy, child, they will do that. They're big. They are no longer children. They, they, you know, they are adults. So that's yeah, my I, speech on that. <laughs> I have to say that part of our cohort generation is, and and one of the things that I really do. And that I have used to, to just help me just manage this is to trust that I and Ian have done a good a great. job raising these boys. And they have the capacity and capability of making decisions. And when I don't trust myself and him and Ian, I said, I was say my prayers and I'm going to sleep. Just go on. <laughs> we always go back to that. So, but, but the other thing is, Terry, after time, you keep doing it and doing it. You learn to let go. But you recognize, apart, when they come home and it is safe, you say, boy, what I was worried about. Thank you, Lord. Why I was worried about. But what we have to say is next time, <laughs> don't repeat the same thing. Try it differently. Wish them well. Enjoy yourself. Tell them enjoy this. And they might watch you and say, what am I with what? <laughs> but um, yeah, we have to be, I, I think it's the consciousness. Yes. And the, the awareness that this may be how you're feeling, but you can do something about it. Yeah. So if you know the why, you would find the answer to, to that decision making and that choice. That, so you are making a choice, I would say, in some cases. You actually make the choice that they're miserable, they're up all night. That's a choice. Some others, you know, and, and we, we as women tend to pong the, the men something and say, look how them sleeping song, 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 you know? Go and sleep. They yeah. like they they ain't care about the children. They sleep in song, and it's not that they choose. They understand that particular situation. They trust they that recognize. they raise them right. They trust yeah. that they know what to do. 
you know so but, we have to so you something have to ask yourself too so what is your issue like they don't trust you yourself. Trust? where's your problem but jennifer there is something that i think is also very important that we have to identify it's something that i don't want to get lost in the translation here identify name and call out that feeling that you're feeling whether it is anxiety yeah. whether it is fear <clears throat> whether it is whatever it is um, because a lot of us are carrying emotions that are subconsciously, I think, impacting how we make decisions and what we do. And it's causing us to end up lost or just <laughs> floating and de facto stop. Damned if you do and damned if you don't. And if we sit still for a few minutes and link with all right what are our thoughts what are our write down a few words what what you're feeling anxious tense relaxed happy think about your loved ones think about your children think about your husband or your partner whether it whoever that partner is think about your parents think about your colleagues think about your job your hobby your garden whatever it is and identify the feeling that you feel and i think then we can ask ourselves that why. Because if it's a feeling that you're not comfortable with and it's there with you all the time, you're probably in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation and stuck in the middle. And if you don't act on it, and I don't mean act always immediately, yeah. It might be something you have to deal with for the present. Like if you're taking care of grandchildren or you're taking care of ill parents, this may be something that you have to do for the now, for the next few years or so. But if you don't identify the emotion that is associated with it and be conscious that it is something that you want, something that you don't want, because some situations are pleasant, you like it. We have to be conscious. Because if we are living with an emotion that we don't want and we're not addressing it and actively looking at it and saying, I see you anxiety, I see you fear, I see you envy and jealousy, I see you nervousness. If we are ignoring it and you're living with that thing for one, two, three, four, five, six years, all kinds of things happen to us inside. We get sick. <laughs> your, 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 your blood sugar, your blood pressure, your, 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 your weight, your attitude, your, your whole orientation to people <laughs> becomes that uh, yeah. if we don't check you know, it. <laughs> when you read on the, the only the positive attributes of, of baby boomers, our the five point eight she group. They have a lot of positives. They say, you know, we were one of the, 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 the most hardworking generation, you know, with the values. And, and I mean, we have really great attributes. But let me let me also look at the weakness, the weaknesses. We are silent generation, and you know that. Mm -hmm. We don't talk, and, and, and the silence to me just just in words, but with the mind. We block off. We 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 silent. Um, if we don't like it, we just ignore those it. <laughs> gremlins. We 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 submerge. We say hey, we don't want to hear you, so we don't listen. We don't listen. So that's that's one thing we don't. So in, kind of in addition to we don't talk to. It, sorry to say it in terms of a saying talking the truth. Be true to yourself. I'm not talking about you being a liar, but not admitting. Because yeah. we feel, and I'm saying it like this, we know it all. We are right. We know what is good for the children, the husband, the family, the neighbor. We know it, right? So it is very difficult to reach that stage you're talking about, to admit and to say this is how we feel. Because by saying how we feel, and, and I'm talking about emotions, which are going down the negative road, is admitting that we don't know it all. And we could be wrong. There's a possibility we could be wrong. And we're dealing with, with, with us, with, with ourselves, all right? Um, the other thing we, we tend to be, we tend to be judgmental. 
So it means that if we're judging others, we not looking, we're not going to judge you're ourselves. You're not looking at ourselves, so we're looking at you. So you just anytime <laughs> we you you're talking about being real and really unearthing that 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 feeling, that emotion and all that, again going back to for us, all that is negative. Mm -hmm. All that is negative. It it causing that pain, that discomfort that you don't like. You don't like the idea of how you feel when the boys go out. You wish you could go in your bed and lie down like how oh, maybe your husband may do. You know? Um, we don't want that discomfort. And we have, you, you know, there's a saying you go to pain to, to gain. But you need to address that discomfort for us to reach the other side. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think our biggest issue is you, um, the, the biggest issue that we have addressing our emotions, you know, our feelings, because we're supposed to be strong. We we uh, are the, 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 the matrix. We, we we tell ourselves can't that. show weakness. <laughs> you know, we, we can't let that. <laughs> our children see us weak like we make a mistake. We don't admit our mistakes. No, we're supposed to be perfect. We're supposed right. to be perfect. So we first, I think number one, for us to, to overcome these discomforts, I want to use the word discomfort, you know, or guilt, because a lot of it do is guilt, because deep within we're saying, you know, um, maybe if we did this, we wouldn't have that fear. Maybe we brought them up too soft. Maybe they're too kind. Maybe somebody will take advantage of, of, of them, you know, and even with us. If we expose ourselves, our weaknesses, then they're going to take advantage of us because we're not trusting that strength. We see in strength in a different way. We see in strength is we work hard and eh? we bring them to the stage and we do this and we do that and we do that. Strength, dear. Yeah. And but we hid all of our side, all of our concerns. We hid them. We didn't expose yeah, them. Yeah, we keep but it inside because we we weren't brought us brought up. To display our weaknesses. Jennifer, can I ask you a question? We talk about energy, energy forces, mm -hmm. and energy in yourself. What is our energy? And what does those unspoken, unidentified feelings due to energy so it's two questions asking you what is energy and and how what could we have been doing to our energy all this time when we out there bravid as you being perfect and just not paying attention to those creeping concerns i would let me explain it very simple and not into all the the, the jargon and this is for me i've learned our body is an energy system Right? So energy, your whole body made up this energy system. And that energy system consists of what you were talking about earlier. All your emotions, your feelings, your values, all the things that within your bringing to your exposure, um, your thoughts, all these things is part of the energy because it makes a difference to so your state of mind and your state of, let me say, state of being. I mean, let me put it simple like that. So it looks like you could be at the low energy or high energy. So the feeling you're talking about, the feeling of discomfort, the fear, the guilt, the, the anxiety, the envy, the, envy, jealousy, thinking envy. that somebody doing better you than you. You can list and one thing we're good at because that that's, we start with the low energy. We start with the negative energy. So anytime you're not feeling that sense of, of happiness, that, that sense of comfort, that, that hope, that, as you say, I would sit back and relax and say, this is the life. You're at a low energy level, just say. Again, in the low energy level, it have the real lowest. So you could say, if you say energy, you have... 
from and you want to 10, let's put it that way. Let's put it at le levels, as I said, just doing basics here. When you at your lowest, you know that, you know, sometimes anxiety and fear is keep you stuck. You're talking about that. You can't get out of bed. Why you don't want to get out of bed? You don't want to face the situation. You staying up whole night waiting on, on the son or daughter or husband or whoever to come home because or you listening have for that teeth. Or listening for the bandits. Every time a dog yes. back, you jump up. <laughs> you don't back, you, you jump up. That is putting, and you have control, by the way. You have control of those emotions. You have control of whether you want to remain at a low energy or high energy. Sad news. Right? You're listening, listening, listening to see if somebody got an accident. When you get that news that the person really got an accident, the first thing some people say, I had that feeling, you know, I always felt they were getting an accident. You ask yourself, are you putting all that negative energy when that child leaving? Mm -hmm. Or whoever leaving, that loved one leaving that house? Are you sending them with a positive energy or low energy? And you know why you have to be careful with the type of energy you're sending them with? Because you're sending them with your energy at the time. Mm -hmm. So you are there, and I'm using you because you use that example with the mm -hmm. sons. So you're saying, bye, have a great time, but how are you feeling deep down? Bye, have a great time, but you're saying, oh God, Lord, I hope they shoot them. I hope I know. What energy is that? That's a low energy. Do you think that energy overpowering Mm -hmm. that by have a good time because by have a good time it was just superficial what you feel you have to mm -hmm. say to make them feel good but what is the energy you're sending with them mm -hmm. some people in, in 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 looking at a positive energy they send they may bless them but yes. are they blessing them with that real faith they actually bless them they make the sign on their forehead and say go in peace go with love but if they really believe the that, in you. Mm -hmm. right. If they really believe that, they're sending them, yes, with positive energy. But guess what? When they send them, they, they could go in the bed and sleep. <laughs> so you don't know whether you send them with a positive <laughs> energy or negative energy. When you can't sleep and you're staying up all night or you're calling them every minute, you send them with negative energy. So that will tell you you're at a low stage. You're not happy with them really mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. And it applies, of course, all the friend situations. Yes. So yeah. we could monitor. So know all the negatives you're thinking, you put in negatives within you. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has some stages. It's very hard to come out of it. Close someone, very close die or something real dumb. Not that you can't come out of it. It happened. Yeah. But you can do things to help build yeah. back that energy. Not that you're not grieving. Yeah. But you're doing things to, to you're looking at that person they say in a positive light, you're remembering the positive things as against, oh God, you'll never see them again. Yeah. Some people they say, oh God, we will, when we meet again. It, it have different ways of doing it. And the, now going into the higher energy, obviously is the opposite. It's looking at the, at the, you're doing things, if it's not in terms of your thought, it's in terms of other things you can do. You ring up a friend. Yeah. A, pos a friend with positive thinking and say, oh gosh, girl, so and so and so, oh gosh, man. And they say, boy, let's go down the road and take a drink. And and mm -hmm. and yeah, on the other side, somebody says, like, look at them, they're going to drink and think. You want to send your negative energy with them. So we have to be careful. And that's what we term as energy. Some people are not aware of it or they may dismiss it, but you could look at it in terms of simply your mindset you know um i am told many times and i appreciate that is that oh john for you so cool and you're taking things cool like you you know you're not emotional and all that or something i myself might say i'm not very emotional it's not that i'm aware i make it my business to be aware of surroundings and i am very conscious when my energy shifts and by the way, you don't remain on a high all the time no, or low no, all the time. You're always on a spectrum. It, it moves. The energy moves. Yeah. But you would like to control that it remains in terms of, of on the higher side. So mm -hmm. you will remain positive. And, you know, there is within this whole energy system, 
you always know they are the 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 we say the limited beliefs meaning that how what what is really you believe do you believe that this would work out do you believe that you will achieve your goals do you believe that things will change or do you have the the negative belief believing that oh it can't happen to me you know yeah. i will never get out of this the term will never do good i will never never yeah you watch your words jennifer you know i think that is so critical and I'm, I'm looking we have about 15 minutes again because this checking in and being honest with yourself where you are now where are your energies are they optimistic pessimistic are you and and, and forget what you're projecting because if you're talking the talk i'm fine i'm great i'm doing well <laughs> but when you sit quietly you know you're sitting down and you're fearful, you're envious, you think you're not measuring up well to the other person, you're fronting, all right? You're fronting. Yeah, yeah. There are so many, and I'm saying this, I'm bringing everybody into the basket. If we remain, now fronting is good because sometimes it is necessary to get us out of a low energy phase yeah, into high yeah. energy phase. So it is very good. But if we live a life of fronting and we don't address those low energy processes, Jennifer, sometimes I fear that with time passing, one month can become a year, one year can become two, three, and five. You always say you plan your year in 10 year increments. I tend to do five. If we really identify our current situation, what are our responsibilities? Whose responsibility are we carrying? What is our role in the family, in the community? And what burdens are we carrying? And what pleasures are we carrying? And we ask ourselves in five years time, do I want to be in this situation? If we don't confront those energies and we are damned, we will be damned if we do, damned if we don't, and we carry something forward for five years or 10 years, we will be in the same fearful situation. But sometimes, Jennifer, the thing that we are concerned about has moved on and changed. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And we are still there. We go back to the driving. Then you're really lost because you are in a place that is not consistent with the environment you are now in. Because today, that overprotective self, that nervous self, that 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 um you, you may use envy and jealousy of another person's position to motivate you to go forward. But if you didn't go forward, if you didn't do what you needed to do to move forward, but you just go along for the next five years in your sense of envy and jealousy, you will five years later be the same. But the thing that you may have been so envious about or wanting to be like would have progressed. And then where are you? Sometimes we obsessed about our grands, I don't have grands, but we're obsessed about our grands because we're looking at limitations of our children and we're taking control. In five years' time, if you don't allow the children to be responsible, when the grand I want nothing to do with five years' time and you're tired and you're ready to drop the, 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 the parenting role. Are your kids going to be in a position to take up what you've been doing for the last five to 10 years? Whether yeah. it's financially, emotionally, physically. You know, we talk about damned if you do, damned if you don't, and being stuck. You might be stuck now. You might be doing something very productive now. But if it is not something that you can sustain, and if it is something that is driven by an emotion that you know is a negative emotion, and you don't put plans to fix it in here. One, two, three, four, and five. Jennifer, 
Yes, six could be a nasty surprise. There are people who will tell you, and I know lots of people will tell you, you see me, at this stage in life, I live in day to day. <laughs> Whatever happened down the road, happened down the road. I'm sure you heard people making these That's kind dangerous. of dangerous. That's dangerous. And you know, sometimes when, when I hear that, I say, you know what? You leave them alone, you know, that is where I refer to. I ain't going down that road because that is their low energy as far as I consume. And they're sucking and, it. <laughs> and that's just it. And I'm not allowing them to take me down there. There are those who say, oh gosh, I wish I can do better, you know. Um, but let's see how things go. You know, there's they, they, they're willing to open up. I rarely see it as a, a real situation that we have, and I say we at this stage, to admit, to be honest, you know, with where we are and, and remove the shame. However, it is not because there's so much judgment is, is, is gone in our, in our cohort. And it is difficult to find the people who you may trust. Mm then in that case, you really need to keep, as you're doing, checking yourself. Do a reality check all the time. Do a reality check all the time. Check on your feelings. And, and you said it, check on your feelings. Oh gosh, um, I don't like what's happening within my relationship. Before you blame, because the first thing we do is blame the other person. It's because the other person doing X, Y, Z. But there's relationship with children, spouse, Whoever. Mr woman, wherever. Mm -hmm. But change that, change the narrative, as they say. Stop putting that blame on the other person. Stop transferring your low energy to that person. Instead, think of, hey, okay, am I really being true to myself? What can I do to be unstuck? What can I do to change that, that thinking? And you know what, Terrian? It's ongoing, eh? it's ongoing. It don't work overnight because we have all various situations. Where there's money, the family, we have a varying, varying situations. So what we have to do is con it's a, it's, it's a continuous process. This is where, this is life. This is life. This is how we have to live life on this stage. You keep doing a reality check, guess why? Because what you're talking about down the road, mm -hmm. in the five years, 10 years, just in your future, what you want? If you ask, I think the majority of people, what do you want in your future? They want to do like me, sit back, relax, and be happy. And be truly relaxed inside and out. You want to be really, yeah. really. We all want that. But guess what? It don't <laughs> always work that. And it can't be for, it don't be all the time. We check the richest and the person out there. They're not the happiest. So yeah. we have to keep checking ourselves. What may make us happy today? may not make us happy the next day. I may be able to like driving or doing something. Something may happen to me. I can't drive again. Guess what? I have to look for something else. Yeah. You have to be always rechecking yourself, understanding you, mm -hmm. and bringing that positive energy as much as you can. And to do that, you have to recognize when you're low, when you're thinking negative, and say, hey, I am not staying stuck. I can do something about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jennifer, I will refer to an exercise we sometimes do when in our workshops where we do a timeline and we talk, we people talk about how yeah. they feel now and what their goals are. And, and this is where I am. And 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 you have people having plans to to travel and to see about grandchildren and things to their children and, and, and they, all of their resources, a lot of their resources, they plan for the next couple of years to have it consumed by others. And they, yep. they, they think they get their pleasure from that. And when we look into underlying factors, it's always that they have a great concern about these people or things that they put in all these resources into but when you ask them that's fine that's good for now because it's required now 
and you ask them to think forward five years, think forward 10 years, so just leave it at five. And you age everybody appropriately, age the grandchildren, age the children, age the, 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 the boss. You ain't gonna be in the company again. <laughs> Age the co-worker that have you while up, you wouldn't be there. The children, the grandchildren, maybe no longer babies, but young five, six, seven year olds, worse again if they're going to be 13 year olds. And they realize that they're taking a huge amount of their resources and energy investing in something that is very short term. It's immediate. But they think, you know, they in finance, they have a thing, you match funds, you use short-term funds for short-term assets and long-term funds. You take a mortgage yeah. to buy a house, you don't take a mortgage to buy groceries, okay? <laughs> you use credit cards for long-term things, you don't use yeah. them, they take a clear it up. They realize that the decisions they are making, their emotional aura, their energy aura, is focused on an immediate, but the actions they are taking are long-term actions. It, it's going to have an impact down five years. But in that five years time, the thing they're so worried about will be very different. And they realize that if I don't check myself now, I am going to be stuck and stay stuck. And if I check myself stuck five years from now, there will be no one around me to pull me out. And I might have so depleted my energy that I can't even pull myself out of that hole. And I think that is something we want to warn our cohort about. Yes. That, that risk of not being honest truly today and making a decision. You might be able to change what situation you're in today. Whether you have to support children, support grandchildren, deal with illness of a close person of spouse or whatever it is think about whether you're you're staying in the current house is it too big is it good for everybody in the house now in, ten, in five years time will everybody be here and you left with the responsibility of it um you want to improve your situation in life you're looking at other friends of yours going on and having activities and and going out and going to picnic and going to the gardens and exercising and you're not doing anything because you're if you stay there and you don't move, what is going to happen to you? What is going to happen? And, and that's what we have to look at. And, and we have to examine whether all the things that we are doing, we need to do it, yes. But are we doing it too? Because we want to be the one, we want to say it's because of us, this has happened. And we want to be looked at as we would, you know, Hero. we, yeah, Hero. <laughs> we did it. And, and that comes back to the saying, when, if we don't manage our expectations, when things don't work out our way, because we did all these things for the grands, the children, the, us and whoever, and it doesn't work out our way, we get annoyed. And, and that saying too, we get annoyed and we say Oh, God damn, if you do that, and if you don't, because look what happened. And it's not that, because we, our expectations, what is your expectation? Is the expectation mm -hmm. doing that, giving you that satisfaction, mm -hmm. that sense of self, that happiness? Yeah. Or is that because you're doing it to say, look, let me, sh I, I could do it. Let me, leave me. You have some things, some people don't give up, eh? They don't yeah. have to do it, you know, but they want to be the one to do it. All right. They take on more responsibility than they have to mm. prove a point. Mm. And anytime you do it like that, you really don't care about you're your You're damned if you and do your and you're damned if you don't. Jennifer, yeah. we've got two more minutes. Would you believe? <laughs> so... And this, you know what I would like to say, Terry Ann, really, really, I, I see that as a weakness in our era because we are custom working hard, controlling, putting things in place and doing all that for others. And for some reason in our head, we swear it making us, giving us that sense of happiness. We need to examine ourselves and really see, hey, and we're not saying at all, don't do what you have to do. 
But I would keep repeating, look at your happiness now. That is what that means. Damn if you and do, think, damn if you don't. So listen, check yourself and do for you. Don't be stuck, manage your energy. Yeah. <laughs> this All right, so time. bye for now. <laughs>